I just came back from the Abraham Hicks Caribbean cruise and it was my fourth time doing a cruise with these spiritual teachers. And I wanted to talk to you today about, in this episode of Lana TV, about what it's like to be on an Abraham Hicks workshop or cruise, and also how do you deal with coming back from being in this highly intense and intentional, awesome vibrational environment and then back to your regular life. If you feel like you come back from a spiritual retreat or some kind of amazing vacation and you go, tanking in your real life, then this episode is for you. So let's start from the beginning. Who is this Abraham Hicks person? Esther and Jerry Hicks are a couple. Jerry's now transitioned into non-physical. Esther is still alive and kicking. Um, she channels. I'm not gonna get into the whole term channeling. You can believe whatever you wanna believe. All I can tell you is when this woman steps on stage and opens her mouth, wisdom flows through that I totally resonate with. That's all I care about. She says that it's a collective of teachers that speaks through her and she calls them Abraham. It's kind of irrelevant. The reason I go to their workshops and read their books and go to their events is because I get so much clarity and inspiration, not just out of the teachings, which of course there's tons of YouTube videos and a lot of my work is really based on uh, the law of attraction and their philosophy, um, but being in an environment and feeling it in your skin, that energy pulsing through your veins, my God, it's an amazing experience. So I've been to many workshops and like I mentioned, this is my fourth cruise and each experience has been different for me. But what I can tell you about all of them is that the energy is off the hook. You feel turned on. You feel so alive. And sometimes it's a little too much. And, and that's where I'm going to talk about how to integrate this energy and what are the things that I've done to be able to come back from events like this and really ease into my life. But also, there's just amazing people are attracted to these events. And at this point, my fourth event, I am meeting like my soul family. I'm helloing, hugging, kissing everybody. I'm just so excited to see them because maybe we saw each other a year ago or two years ago at the last event. So for me now, it is so fun to go and hang out with leading edge thinkers and deliberate creators who are flying high, who are intent on feeling good, who are intent on manifesting from the inside out, and we get to play together. So I highly recommend Abraham Hicks events. I get tons of questions about it. If you have a chance to go to a workshop or a cruise, do it. If you have a chance to go to a cruise, I would recommend that over a workshop only because you get to know the people at the event so much better. Now on to this particular cruise and what are some of the things that I got from this workshop. Each time I come away from these nuggets of truth or ahas, and this time I actually didn't have so many ahas. For me, my biggest aha maybe from this cruise was that, oh my God, I know this, and not only do I know it, I live it, which is such a great realization to come to. And so a couple of things that I wanted to share with you that might be reviews for me and maybe new for some of you is a lot of talk about the path of least resistance at this particular cruise. And the path of least resistance, the clarity that I got is also the path of most allowing. It's also can be the past path of most excitement, but the path of, path of least resistance is this like surrendering and letting go of the resistance, letting go of the fight. If something isn't quite going your way, trust me, trust life, trust law of attraction that you can let go of the bone and you can still get what you truly want. Let go of the, the um, swimming upstream and really trying to hold on to something for dear life and know that you can still have the experience and the manifestation that you want in another way. There's all, it's like water going around a rock. If there's a rock, it doesn't try to penetrate through it. That's too hard. That's not the path of least resistance. You want to flow around it. So for me, what I took from it is um, when I came back, for example, I had a bunch of things that came up. You know, I had uh, um, 
um, things that were already in motion. I had a photo shoot scheduled. I had a bunch of, uh, I was training a new assistant, all of these things. And as soon as I came up against this wall, I just kept reminding myself, what is the path of least resistance? And sometimes it was rescheduling things. Sometimes it was canceling things. Sometimes I get out my machete and I just start cutting off anything that isn't feeling really good to me. But that the path of least resistance is always a complete guidance system to guide you, to guide me toward what we truly want and to trust in that and to really experience it for yourself is priceless. Another nugget, another truth I wanted to share with you is somebody came up and said they had a writer's block and you know, I'm a writer, I'm a creator. Sometimes I have those, not so much really anymore. But one thing that I really resonated with was when Abraham says is don't write for others. Don't write for the service of others. Don't write to get this done. Write for the pleasure of it. Create for the pleasure of it. Because when you create something from, for the pleasure of it, within it is all, are all of the ingredients that are going to make it successful, that are going to attract those that resonate. So it's a complete package. It's a complete guidance system. So all you got to do is follow what truly inspires you. And that means that there are already clients lined up and readers lined up and participants lined up that are going to resonate with that really great thought for me to soothe myself with and remind myself as I create new things for you guys. And the last thing is a continuation of this living life for pleasure, which, you know, I've talked about before that it isn't just pleasure in this kind of totally irrelevant to the world sense. It's like your pleasure is the greatest way that you could be of service to the world. And eating for pleasure was something that a couple of people talked about. Don't even eat for health. Don't eat to heal a disease. Don't eat for some long-term result. What Abraham recommended is eat for pleasure and for vitality in the moment. Eat because you have the anticipation of it, because it feels good in your mouth, because it feels good after. And when you do that consistently, your body will naturally align. And I have experienced this so clearly. I let go of being a vegetarian and then needing to eat plenty of vegetables and then doing the green juices and blah, 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 blah. I had, my head was full of ideas of what I should and shouldn't be doing. And when I eat for what truly feels good to me, then I am able to not only feel great that day, but it's amazing how my body just takes on the best shape. And then I'm inspired to do this certain type of movement. And it's just incredible how vitality, radiance, and health is available to us through this path of least resistance, through the path of most allowing of what feels right to us in the moment. And they also talked about that sometimes you might be kind of lost and you can't hear your intuition. So they talked about like, well, should I let my kids eat sugar all day long? And they basically said, Said, hey, let them eat what they want. In a few days or a few weeks, they're not going to want to eat sugar all day long because nobody wants to feel that kind of effect. Meaning, let them figure out a way to connect to their guidance system. Let your children, let yourself, let your partner. Let go of this need to control and manhandle your life. That was mm, just music to my ears. So I got in the hot seat. This is my fourth time in the hot seat. What that means is that I raise my hand and I get invited to be on stage with Abraham in front of, I don't know, a thousand people. Super exhilarating experience. I can do a whole Lana TV episode just about my hot seat experiences because they're so different and so fun. But this time I really felt like I got it out of my system. This like, pick me, pick me. I want to prove something to myself. I think in the past I felt like maybe I will be more worthy or something if I get picked and prove it to myself and the audience or what, whoever. But this time it was just really easy. I just had some things I wanted to talk about. I want to talk about parallel realities and imagination. I wanted to talk about masterminds and my courses and all that. And it was just so easy. It was so easy to just raise my hand. Somebody else's question inspired and re, reformed uh, my question into what it really ended up being. And I danced to stage and it felt so good to just dance up there and people clapping and I got on stage and it really felt like it was just me and Abraham. And this time around, one of the most powerful experiences for me is that I felt like there were two equals sitting there. It wasn't a teacher and a student. 
It was really two equals discussing and enjoying each other's company. And the discussion, uh, we covered imagination, the power of your imagination. You know, in my course, especially in the Accessing Alignment course, I really do my best to help you stretch your imagination, which as I was talking to Abraham, I said, it's no longer my imagination. I feel like I'm entering other parallel realities. It's like I become a new me and the new me has a different husband and different kids and different income and different things. And they said, yeah, that's indeed true you are entering a new you which means the whole world around you changes and then we talked about the distinction between Esther and Abraham and why that's still valid I will release the recording as soon as the recordings come out so you can listen to it but the greatest experience I had was after the hot seat I'm dancing off stage you know having a good time and then Abraham turns to the whole audience and says she is so full of herself you can all be like that And I sat down and I just fully received the greatest compliment that maybe anybody could ever receive. In front of a thousand people and really witnessing my experience, I affirmed and confirmed to myself how clear I am, how powerful I am, how invincible I am, how intelligent I am, what a good allower and deliberate creator I am. And now I am full on, I am fully myself. That's what it means. And it was especially meaningful for me because all through my childhood, I was a pretty strong willed child. I really was clear on what I wanted and what I didn't want. And I heard a lot of this kind of, you know, you probably, you know, you're not, you're not going to get what you want. And I remember somebody in my life telling me like, nobody's going to love you when you're so like determined and you just want things your way. And so it was a healing at a really deep level for me to recognize that full on is good. It's welcomed. I don't have to be smaller than I am. I don't have to be less clear than I am. And so it was amazing to experience all of the conversations that took place afterwards and people coming up and saying, wow, that was a really inspiring interaction and you were so lit up. And so when I got home, I did my best to integrate. I do all of the practice I do. Actually, the Accessing Alignment course was truly created after my, I think, second um, uh, cruise when I totally crashed. Like I entered a period of like serious depression and I didn't know what to do with myself. So all of these practices were born and coagulated and put together as a way for me to really have stability in my life. So before, during and after these very high energy experiences, I'm able to stay grounded and centered and, and feel good. And so after this experience, I did still experience a bit of a downturn. It wasn't really a depression type of thing. It's just that I came back and I realized that the new me that is different from the two weeks ago me that left now has different desires and now has different experiences. And now I had to make the adjustments in my life. Some people that were in my life are no longer truly resonating. Some new people are coming into my life. Some of the offerings that I was doing for my business no longer really kind of tickle me pink and some other things do. And so the hard part for me was really to own and recognize that I am truly a new me. And the more that I did that, the easier it got. And so now I'm standing before you. It's been a few weeks after the cruise. I feel so fucking full on and amazing. It's insane. And I feel it at a much more grounded and integrated level. So my suggestions for you, just a couple of tips. If you go on a super amazing workshop or retreat or something, and you want to ground it is number one, be really, really honest with yourself about what you feel. Don't try to cover it up. Don't try to just go back into your life and pretend everything's the same. If you angry, if you're feeling things come up, kick, scream, express, talk to a friend, surround yourself with people who you can be fully, fully yourself with. Number two, make sure that you do have extra rest, that you're drinking extra water and doing all of those self care things. Certainly the alignment practices that I share in the accessing alignment course are going to be so helpful to integrate, you know, the meditations, the gritting, the, the visualizations, the community that we have. And number three, and this is maybe the most important step, know that you have just come from a high. This high is intended to set the bar for where you want to head and where you want to be. Don't expect yourself to come from the super, super high and next day have that be your norm. 
It won't be your norm. It took me maybe six months or a year to integrate and feel like I came back from the Mediterranean cruise and I told myself, I want to feel this free, this open, this abundant in my life. And it took me maybe a year to actually feel that way in my everyday life. So make sure that you are expressing yourself, you're doing all of the self-care and allow yourself to go through this integration period and honor it. It is truly sacred. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that this has been helpful to you in some way. Now I want to hear from you. Have you been to an Abraham Hicks event or have you been to a really amazing spiritual retreat? By the way, I want to know what it is because I want to discover more teachers, more experiences that are delightful and pleasurable. Tell me how you felt uh, during and after. And also, I want to know how you integrate some of these highs. You know, what are, what are the tools that you use to sort of ground? Or maybe you don't have any tools and just let me know what uh, has been helpful about what I've shared. Thank you so much for watching Lana TV. You have no idea how much fun it is for me to talk to you like this. I feel like we're so connected through the screen and I love helping you go from, I have a vision. Where is what I want? And what is it that I want to go from? I have arrived. I'm so fucking full of myself. And I want you to feel like you are full of yourself and full of joy and full of love and full of light and full of adventure, whatever full of yourself means to you. Thank you for watching many, many blessings.